Okay. <laughs> I think I have pretty much tore everything apart and documented it. I'll go through my list, check it twice, see if it's been naughty or nice, and uh, start ordering some stuff, hopefully. Oh, a little bit of humor there. Not finished yet. Still got the sun wheels to do. And there is some things about those you need to know. As I pull that sun wheel up, show how much of that thrust washer is gone. We got uh, 0 0.0025 backlash. Pull the pin, pull the sun wheels and the planet wheels to put new thrust washers under it to be zero backlash. Sitting here down into the spline shaft on the sun wheel. Point zero zero seven five. If I can mark this here and here, maybe I'll put it right on the number. Okay, mark is right at the, the numbers here. You know, the V three, and then the three nine six one over here. Okay. Pulling off the crown wheel shaft is sticking up a little bit and the crown wheel can't go over it. So right here is the access hole to that pin. I got an 18 penny nail, flat end on it. And the pin shifted and let the... Man, that is a long pin. The pin is, it's a roll pin, uh, 0 0.01925 in diameter, in length, uh, 2.3775. That's two and three eighths inches long. Okay, we got two flats here, right where the planet wheel is. Nothing on the other side. You can just barely see the shine. That's where Planet Wheel was riding. Um, length is 3.6330 inches or 92.27 millimeter. The big one is sun gear. The little one is planet gears. You had to rotate the sun gear to roll the planet gear out. And that come out of the one side, and the other one come out of the other side. There's one sun gear. That one had just a little bit of a planet wheel shaft, a measuring polished, 6.225, 15.81 millimeter. What are we in the center where there has been no wear? 0 0.6225 inches, 15.82 millimeter. The inside of the wheel, 0 0.6270 inches, 15.93 millimeter. That will be able to tell me. Check the backlash on the sun wheels in the splines of the inner drive shaft. See what kind of slop I got with uh, the splines. Okay, that's where I have it set on the tooth. Flush with the front, it probably would be riding. And to keep it from moving backwards, I've got a clamp here so I don't get uh, this kind of action because uh, this is at an angle. This is the left sun wheel. I will I'll twist it down and zero. Now I'll raise it up. I got point zero zero eight five. I just call it slop in the splines. 
to the left wheel. Now I'll switch it over to the right sun wheel. Same way as the other one. Rotate it all the way clockwise. Zero. And then I'll counterclockwise. Point zero zero eight five backlash on the right side sun wheel inner axle splines. There. That's a mouthful. Once you get your bearings installed on the carrier, set in the cradle, and I roll the carrier, let the bearings settle. You're going to move the carrier without any shims in here because you want to know the float so you can figure the shims. Move the carrier all the way away from your measuring dial. I'm putting in a couple of small screwdrivers to hold it away. There's, there is a little bit of pressure there against the bearings, the races. As the bearings settle, it loosens up just a little bit. I'm ready. Still a little free roll there, but um, I'm putting the dial against here and not against the crown wheel, locking it down. It's a different magnetic base, one that actually has more holding power. I am currently at 0 0.029 inches. I'm going to move it towards the dial. And that's the float. That's going to be dimension A. And now I'm at 0.1145 inches. Dimension A. I'd like to also make a note here. If you install the crown wheel before you get your sun wheels and planet wheels, your thrust washers installed, you'll have to take your crown wheel off again. So, again, do not mount the crown wheel until all of this inside here is ready and done. Then mount your crown wheel. See how you did with your shim.